So let's get started on our advanced cinema graph. Um, we're going to add another layer of cool by um, actually just uh, uh, once again we're going to copy our original video and we said that we we liked the girl that was uh, walking in um, or uh, riding her bicycle through the clip. Now as you can see here we we actually um, we didn't use that part of the clip but if I drag this clip out she is in there. Oh, She's just further down than we thought. Let's see where she is. There she is, right there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, trim my uh, playheads. This is my end, so I'm going to wait till she's out of the frame, right? And then I'm going to come back along over here and uh, just grab the front of this clip and trim it till she's in the frame. So I'm going to work along, pull it back over. Keep going, keep going, keep going. She should be coming up any second now. There she is, okay. So what I want to do here um, is I'm gonna just shut this, this one off real quick just so I can show you um, my goal for this uh, advanced treatment. I'm gonna close the eye there so you, we can't see her when we move the playhead. And um, he, right here, this signifies our, our transition and fade. Now what I want um, from my uh, from from this girl coming through here is I want people to be looking at the girl on the bike right when this ghosting is happening right here that way they don't notice the ghosting and they're only focusing on the girl on the bike right so what we're going to do is we're actually going to be similar to the the last uh, workshop we're going to use the pen tool to create a traveling mask that's going to follow the girl on the bicycle um, all the way across the image right at the point when um, the when, when the fountain starts to ghost out. So right about at this point is when we want the girl to be front and center right here. Okay, Turn this one back on. And then we're going to use something from the animation world called an onion skin. So in order to create an onion skin, I believe what we're going to do is hit enable onion skin. What it's done is it's made this particular layer here um, transparent. And what this comes from is back in the animation days, um, when you would be doing keyframes in animation, you would be doing them over vellum or a semi-transparent um, uh, type of paper so you could see what the uh, what the paper looked like under here as you started to make the next transition in animation. Take our pen tool and I'm going to just pull her to about here and uh, I'm going to hit pen or uh, P for pen and I'm going to start to draw around her. Okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be pretty darn close. And we're making a little bit of room around here just as a buffer. Because she goes by so quickly, we don't need to worry too much about making it perfect. Now that we've made this path and we have this layer selected, we're going to hit mask. Okay. And now over here, we have a vector mask here. And if you look down on our timeline, we now have the uh, option to keyframe the vector mass position. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, pull our uh, the our bicyclist back, right? And uh, let's go ahead and just um, grab this mask. We do that by hitting this particular button. I think it's A on the keyboard, and that gives us the arrow. Start to keyframe it. So let's let's uh, let's find out exactly where she gets started here. Um, let's see where she starts to come onto the image, and we'll start animating it. So let's just go ahead and uh, click the, the stopwatch button there, and we will start to pull this over a little bit, and pull this along. Oh, there's the start of it right there. So let's uh, advance along a little bit, and we'll go ahead and pull this guy over. Close. About there is pretty good. Yeah, about there, I think. 
So let's just see how that works. Make sure our frame's working good. And you can see how it just pulls it along a little bit right there. So let's go right here. Now let's move along, I don't know, to about here and just make sure everything's lined up. The part that we really want to watch is the back end right here. Let's keep going a little bit more, a little bit further. Just make the back end we get lined up. Because we know if the back end is lined up, the front will be lined up. So we'll... Now this isn't an exactly a, a linear animation, and the reason is because she's actually writing at a diagonal. So at some part she speeds up, some part she slows down a little bit. So we kind of just have to manually do it like this just to make sure that we're lined up correctly. And then about here, it's about off. So let's see how that worked out. So far so good. So let's hit play and let's let it render out and see how it did. Pretty good. We just need to make sure that when the original image is ghosting, that this is going to just, because uh, I, I want it to be, um, I want it to be about right here. So let's just pull it along and make sure that the image is ghosting at this point. Uh, let's find where that ghost part is. That's the part I don't want people to see. Yeah, so she's landing right there. So your eye's not looking at this part, you're looking at her. So when we play through it here, yeah, I think uh, we've done a good job of focusing the eye elsewhere. Oh, one more thing is I'm gonna come over here and actually just uh, disable our onion skin because we don't need it anymore. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Yep, there we are. As you can see, uh, nothing else is transparent, so it doesn't have that really contrasty look anymore. Okay, so we're going to save it to H.264. Um, and to do that, we're going to do um, a slightly different workflow than we've done before in the past. So to start with, in Photoshop, we're going to come over here and hit File. First of all, we can save out our image, Command-S, File, Export, Render to Video. Call it Fountain high quality okay and then um, you can come over here hit quick time and hit animation high quality and we can go ahead and make sure that it's doing the whole work area and go ahead and hit render okay once it kicks that out and we're going to open the video and then we're going to pull it into media encoder to actually turn it into an h.264 that we can then embed onto a website and the reason why we're doing this is because it's better quality than GIF and the file size is much smaller. So for us to save this out as a GIF, we'd probably be looking at 13 to 15 megabytes. If we use H.264, it's going to be about one megabyte. So, um, and like I said, it's, it's a much nicer quality because we can have a lot more colors in it. So here's a uh, fountain high quality movie. And if we open it up and we play it, looks pretty good. The only other problem is that there actually is audio in this track and I'm not sure that my screencast um, actually recorded that here but there is audio in the track. That's okay, I'll show you how we fix that, okay? Um, let's go ahead and fire up Media Encoder. Adobe Media Encoder, there it is. So as you can see, I made a preset here in Media Encoder and uh, that's what I'm going to have you do as well. So um, I'm actually just going to delete this preset, drag this into Media Encoder. Okay. I'm going to select this and call uh, the output of the, of the file uh, fountain ready uh, for, for web. Okay. Save. Didn't actually save anything yet because we haven't told it how it's going to save out. Now we're going to come over here and hit the plus button for create a new preset. Hit format, yep, make sure it's on H.264, and we're going to base it off of a Vimeo preset, the Vimeo SD wide preset. So go ahead and click that. And when we do that, it gives us uh, some settings down over here in the video. First thing that we want to do is we want to click off export audio because we don't need the audio on there anymore. 
The next thing is um, this little checkbox over here is match source. So this means whatever is in the original file is what it's going to set the width and the height to. So I want it to actually use what's in the original file. So that's based on source. Um, as you can see, this was all done in the uh, uh, Vimeo preset. We're going to leave that alone. And then we're going to come down to target bitrate and maximum bitrate. Right now we have it at 4. And what we're going to want to do is take this all the way down to about 1. Oh, we'll call it 1. And give it the maximum bitrate to about 1.5. Okay. Now the only other thing that we're going to change um, here is, is going to be... Oops. Uh, is going to be um, the frame rate. At current, our frame rate is uh, based upon um, based upon the source. But what I want to do is take it down to the lowest acceptable frame rate um, that looks good. And I tend to like 23,976. 15 is a little choppy. That's better for animation. But because we have a fluid uh, liquidy kind of animation, it's not going to look as good. So let's take it down to 23,976. Okay. So now we can go ahead and save this. Okay. New preset. And actually, if I edit this again, this is how you edit your preset settings. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, this preset is going to be called, um, we're going to call this our Cinemagraph preset. Maybe for web preset. And once we do this, we only have to set, do these settings once. Then, if we want to apply this to whatever video that we've made, I'm just going to drag it and drop it. Then we hit this play button right here. And like that, it's all done. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to take a look exactly where I saved this one out. Let's say I put it in my Cinemagraphs, uh, uh, my Cinemagraphs file here. And here's my original animation, but we, we, we called it uh, Fountain ready for web.mp4. First of all, let's take a look at the size. Just hit Command I to open up that. So we can see it's H.264. It has the correct dimension size. It's 877 kilobits on the disk. That's fantastic. Much smaller than it would have been uh, with a GIF. So let me open it. And I'll play through. There we go. Not bad. Um, in QuickTime, you can actually tell it to loop, so we'll get a better idea of how it's going to look. I'm very happy with this. That looks great. Okay. So now it's ready to go on the internet. 